Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Now here's a simple, safe, reducing plan for overweight people. An effective way to lose excess pounds without discomfort or without resorting to methods of which your doctor might not approve. Drink a glass full of Horlicks at noon instead of eating a heavy meal. Here's why that Horlick luncheon will help you people who are anxious to regain a youthful waistline. Horlicks, while it is nourishing, energy-giving, and sustaining, doesn't have the heavy meal's excess of calories. When you drink a glass full of, of Horlicks for luncheon instead of a heavier meal, you are reducing your caloric intake. And that, as you probably know, is the fundamental principle of losing weight. There's another thing about the Horlick luncheon, too. It's much easier to digest than is a heavy meal. And that's why Horlicks at noon will keep you alert later. Why it will not leave you feeling drowsy or listless. Try the Horlick luncheon tomorrow. You can get Horlick's malted milk, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. And you can prepare a glass of Horlick's quickly and easily, either at home or at your work. Mix it with water alone. You don't need to add any flavoring or any raw milk to make a delicious and full-flavored glass full of Horlicks. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. You know, the Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau has received hundreds of applications from women in search of a husband. A few days ago, not having any pictures of prospective husbands to send out, Lum conceived the idea of mailing out a few pictures of Abner. Well, evidently, Abner's pictures made quite a hit with the ladies. Among other letters, yesterday he received one from a Miss Hortense Kelly, who stated that she had fallen in love with him through his picture and was coming to Pine Ridge to pay him a visit soon. <laughs> As we look in on the old fellows today, we find that they have moved their office back down to the store building formerly occupied by their Jotham Down store. Abner seems very much worried over Miss Kelly's threatened visit. Listen. Well, now, Lum, you got me into this, and it's up to you to get me out of it. Well, Abner, I told you a hundred times you ain't into nothing. Yes. Well, I'd like to know why I ain't. A woman coming down here wanting to marry me, and he already married. Oh, she ain't coming down here. She says she is, and that letter says it was a case of love at first sight, and for me to wait for her that she's coming down here. Oh, yeah, I know. She's just more than likely having a little fun out of you. No, sir. No, sir. No, that woman is in love with me. I can tell the way she talked in that letter. Uh, road in it. Well, if she was to come down here and got a good look at you, she'd more likely catch the next train back home. I don't know, Lum. Women folks fall in love with me awful easy. Uh, I just wish sometimes that I weren't so handsome. Handsome? I know it didn't get me in trouble sooner or later. It's these big blue eyes of mine that does it. You ain't getting stuck on yourself over them women folks writing to you. Well, no, but they can't all be wrong, Lum. One of them others said that she thought I had understanding eyes. Yeah, understanding eyes. What she said? She ain't got good sense about him tell that by reading her letter. Well, I don't know what to do about it. I'm just a good mind to write her a letter and tell her not to come. No, I wouldn't start writing her no letters now. You will get yourself involved sure enough. Best thing to do is just ignore her. Well, I ought to write and tell her I'm already married. No, don't tell her that. You give the matrimonial bureau a black eye. If she finds out we're sending out pictures of a man that's already married, don't tell him what she'll think. Well, what do you think that Elizabeth's going to think when she finds it out? She'll about to give me two black eyes. Well, if she does come down here to see you, the thing to do is just not let Elizabeth know nothing about it. <laughs> it's a good thing she's still down there in Texas, Miss. Yeah, well, that won't help matters none long. The first thing that Sister Simpson or some of these other gossips around here will do is sit right down and write her a letter and tell her about the whole business. And by the time Elizabeth hears about it, well, they'll have a truth stretch the fur out of shape, but there ain't no telling what they'll have her bleeding. You know how Sister Simpson exaggerates. Oh, well, Elizabeth will take your word again there. Well, she does. She's changed a lot since she went down there, I'll say that. I just allowed a man's wife always believed her husband before they would anybody else. Yeah, well, of course, you never have been married, or you never would make such a remark again. You just got it right square backwards. Elizabeth will believe anything bad about me that she hears, regardless of who tells it to her. Oh, you're just making a mountain out of a molehill. Huh? I say, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. 
What I mean by that is... I know what you mean. You don't have to explain stuff to me. Well, that's the first time I ever knowed you to understand what I was talking about. Well, I don't know why you'd say that. Special about me. Well, generally always when I quote one of them old edited sayings of mine, I've got to stop and explain to you what I'm talking about. Huh. I mean, it's just like arguing with a stump on fire to get it through your thick head. Oh, well, no, I've heard that old saying all my life, huh? <laughs> of course, you never said it right, but uh, I know what you're trying to say. I never said it right. No, no, you got it sort of mixed up there, right, Lum. Uh, the way the saying goes is that if you can't take the mountain to the molehill, take the molehill to the mountain. That's oh, the thing. for goodness sake. You're talking about Mohammed in the mountain. No, I, I said molehill, Lum. You just misunderstood me. I know what you said. I mean, you're thinking about Mohammed. I ain't no such a thing. I ain't thinking about nothing. Yes, you are. I know what you're thinking about. Well, now, Lum, I reckon I ought to know more about what I'm thinking about than you do. You can't read my mind. No, and nobody else can. More than likely, ain't nothing in your head there but a big vacuum. A vacuum? <laughs> for the land <laughs> Why, there ain't room for a vacuum in my head. Where would they put the handle? Oh, for goodness sake, Abner. Where would they put that? What I meant, you're taking a little bitty molehill that don't mount to nothing and trying to make a big mountain out of it. Taking this little letter you got from that woman and making such a to-do over it. Well, now, which? Which what? What am I trying to do? I say that's what you're doing when you take this letter so serious. You're making a mountain out of it. Oh, oh, I, I think I understand what you mean now. You mean if I can't get her to come here, that I'll have to go there, huh? No, no, you're still thinking about Mohammed. No, her name is Hortense. Don't you remember, I'm Hortense Kelly. That's her name. Abner, you're getting yourself all twisted up now. Huh? Set still. I mean, you're getting your mind twisted up. Oh. Just oh. forget about the mountain. Forget about Hortense, too. You're just worrying yourself over nothing. Wait till she gets here. Then it'll be time enough to start worrying. Yeah, it'll be too late then. How long? you just got to study up some way to keep that woman away from him. I told you to quit thinking about it. Even if she does come again, she sees you, she'll know she's made a terrible mistake. Yeah, but I don't want her coming down here. I tell you, Lord, I'll smell trouble in it. Well, Abner, you can't keep the woman from coming to Pine Ridge if she wants to. There ain't no log in coming down here. That blamed if I don't believe you want her to come. Oh, I ain't particular about it. I... Would love to see if she's as pretty as her picture shows her to be. Picture? I ain't saw no picture of her. Well, I did. I'd forgot which one she was. But after you got that letter, you see, I got sort of curious to see what she looked like. So I got out the letter she sent us about herself when she made the application for her husband. Yeah. <laughs> There's her picture there. Well, what you doing carrying it around your pocket that way? No, oh, I did. Right. Well, what difference does it make? Oh, she is a right smart of a looker, ain't she? Yeah, that's the prettiest one we've got here. Oh, she is a dandy. <laughs> She's red-headed, according to the description she sent in about herself. Wouldn't well, be surprised. Twenty-six year old. Well. She's an actress. Is that right? Yeah, I win a marathon dancing contest. Well, I do, no yeah. bless her heart. Stands five foot two and weighs hundred and twelve pounds. Well, I swan to goodness. What's the matter with you? Yeah, I see now. Yeah. You just want to get that woman down here so you can see her yourself. Well, where did you get such ideas out of here? Just about the size of it. I see through the whole thing now. Yeah, yeah, you scared to send your own picture, fear that Evelina would find out about it, so you sent now, her Now, wait a minute, Abner, just call yeah, me And you're going to sit down there right now and tell her that you made a mistake for sending her the wrong picture. That fella she's in law with it doesn't matter. I ain't going to write her no such a thing. You know how come me to send them pictures of you out. They were the only ones we had here. Either you sit down and write her not to come, or I'm going to step right there at the telephone and call up Evelina. Call up Evelina? Yes, sir, and tell her that you're in law with Hortense. Go ahead, call her, call her That's up. That's just what I'm going to do, yes. I'll bet you'll stop her from coming down. Here. Abner, get away from that telephone. I ain't going to do it. I said I was going to tell her, and I'm going to tell her. Abner. Going... Hello? Abner. Uh, Sister Simpson? Oh, my goodness. Is Evelina there? Abner, give me that receiver. Uh, tell her to step to the telephone, please, Here, Mom. I'll show you. Receiver. I'll show you. Yes, what are you sir. trying to do? Break me and Evelina up? Well, I'd rather break you and Evelina up to have that woman break me and Elizabeth up. All right, all right. I'll write the letter. Hang up the receiver. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's Evelina now. Hello? Here, give me that receiver. Hello, who is this? Who? Evelina. Well, you've got the wrong number. This is the Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau. Goodbye. Now, stay away from that telephone. Well, write that letter, Lord, and I'll be right back up there saying it again. Abner, this ain't nothing but out-and-out blackmail. What do you want me to say? Just tell her that you sent the wrong picture, and she better not come down here on account of I'm done married. All right. Hand me that pencil there. Yeah. Doggy, that's a relief. Just wouldn't do for her to come down here, Lord. Really? Elizabeth, just go high. Mr. Young. 
Well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, come in, Dick. Well, move back down here in the old store building, have you? Yeah, we never had room over at my place for the matrimonial office. <laughs> well, I went over there looking for you. I got a telegram here for you, Abner. Uh, telegram? Yeah. Yeah, they left it down there at the store. I told them I'd see if you got it. Well, I do know. <laughs> I bound you saw that little back and pond if you're coming home. <laughs> uh, sit down, Dick, and loaf a while. Yeah, <laughs> looks natural to see you fellas back over here at the store. Yeah, <laughs> I was sitting here today thinking, I wish we'd never sold our store. Yeah, yeah. Seems so quiet around here without no merchandise in the shelves. What's the matter, Abner? For goodness sake, Abner, you look like you saw a ghost. What's the matter? Must be something that telegram lunch. Uh, nothing happened to your mm-hmm. wife, has it, Abner? Uh, Mr. Abner Peabody, Pine Ridge. Darling, I will arrive tomorrow. Can hardly wait to see you. Love. Or can't. <laughs> well, it's too late now. Our sense is probably already on her way to Pine Ridge. Ladies and gentlemen, poor and unhealthy teeth and gums are the cause of much suffering and misery. It's most important that every one of us give our teeth proper care. And it's doubly important that we parents keep a careful watch over the condition of our children's teeth. For sound and healthy teeth are formed during childhood years. Three things are important in preventing decay. First, regular visits to the dentist. And second, regular and proper cleaning of the teeth. Third, and just as important as the other two, is proper diet. The teeth and gums, like other parts of the body, are made from the food that we eat. The same foods that build up healthy teeth will protect teeth against decay. Now, calcium, phosphorus, and the vitamins are elements that are responsible for the formation of healthy teeth. And Horlick's malted milk is an excellent source of all of these elements. To help children develop sound teeth and gums, give them several glassfuls of Horlick's every day. To do so is to spare your child much unhappiness in later years. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who now bid you all good night and good health.